Hi, I'm Vikram and uh, welcome back to A Roll of Film. In today's video, I'm going to review the Nikkor Q 200mm f4 lens. Uh, this lens was manufactured from 1961 to 1973, making it uh, almost as old as me, in fact, uh, probably a little older than me. Same, uh, so you could, you could just say that we are from the same generation. Now this, uh, now the lens is a fully manual lens. There's nothing automatic about this for manual uh, focusing and manual aperture. Uh, it has uh, four elements. It's a four element lens in four groups and remain unchanged, more or less unchanged during its entire life. That is from 61 to 73. There were very, very minor changes to the, uh, to this lens. Most of them, uh, but it remained a four element lens in four groups. Now, uh, the lens was manufactured in 1961 and it has a single coating. It is not a multi coating coated lens. It has a single coating with a slight blue tinge. Uh, multi coating came in in 1973. That was one of the few changes that happened at that time. In 1973, it became a multi coated lens. And uh, you, you, can, you can make out the multi coated lens. Lenses with the, they added the word, the letter C. So any Nikon QC is a multi-coated lens which came out in 73. Anything without the word, without the letter C has a single coat, a single coating. Now this uh, single coating had a slight blue tinge. Now you have to understand that in 1961 when this uh, lens first came out, most people were shooting in black and white. Color photography was not so popular. However, a couple of years later, uh, color photography started getting more and more popular and then people started uh, experiencing a bit of a problem because of this blue coating. So about two or three years after initial manufacture, Nikon uh, decided to tackle this problem by, uh, uh, by removing this blue tinge. And while they were doing it, they made a few more uh, adjustments. Uh, structural adjustments to the lens to improve its performance in terms of sharpness, contrast, etc. So in the early years, it had a six blade uh, diaphragm aperture and uh, when they went to do the modifications, they made that a seven blade one. So what happened when it when they made it a seven blade one is that number one, the focusing distance, the minimum focusing distance came down to about uh, from seven feet to about 6.2 feet and you could stop down the aperture by one more stop that is to f32. So these are the basic uh, changes that came in. Now the only way you can make out uh, whether this has a six blade aperture or a seven blade is by seeing uh, two things. One is the minimum focusing distance and the other is whether you have a 32 aperture or not. So I have the 32 f32 here and the minimum distance is two meters which is six point some feet. Therefore this is uh, the one with the seven blade, uh, this thing and the blue tint is not there. So I can safely use this uh, with, uh, with color fit. Now another uh, thing a lot of people get, uh, uh, get um, uh, a little uh, confused is that you have the word auto in this lens. It's written here, Nikkor Q Auto F200 F4. Now, uh, this is a totally manual lens. There's nothing automatic about it. So what does this word auto stand for? Now these lenses uh, were built to be used with an SLR camera, the F camera, Nikon's, Nikon's F uh, range of cameras and this has the F mount. Now the problem with uh, an SLR is that you're seeing through the lens. So it creates a problem when you step, stop down the aperture. So if supposing you have your aperture on the lens fixed at F16, now your viewfinder will become extremely dim, right? Because you're seeing, because the light is traveling through the lens into the viewfinder. So whenever you change the aperture in your lens, it affects the brightness of the viewfinder. So this made focusing very difficult. You, uh, if you remember, uh, this is a manual focus lens. So you have to focus manually, there's no automatic focus. So because of a dim viewfinder, uh, focusing became extremely difficult. Now this was a problem in uh, in in uh, all SLRs of that time, and uh, there were two or three ways in which you could work around this. And one way of working around this was to open up the lens fully. I mean, to get the to the to its widest aperture, achieve focus, and then stop down to the aperture you want to use. 
So as you can imagine, this was a very cumbersome process, very time consuming process. Uh, previously, uh, I have uh, uh, reviewed the Helios 44-2 lens and uh, they came up with a very innovative way of uh, handling this, tackling this problem and uh, if you haven't seen that uh, video, I strongly suggest you do so. I'll drop a link down in the description. Nikon uh, came up with another way to tackle this problem and they called it Auto. So what it generally, what it generally means is that when you uh, stop down this lens to f16, uh, the aperture does not actually stop down to f16, it remains open at its widest and it only stops down to that uh, value when you press the shutter, therefore solving the problem of a dim viewfinder. So that is why it is called auto, that is why the word auto comes, it has not absolutely nothing to do with autofocus or uh, any other auto function, it is just that uh, uh, it, it is a technique through which uh, the viewfinder remains bright. So that is why it is known as auto. Now having solved this problem, uh, there was another techni uh, technological innovation that happened in 1977 and that is uh, uh, through the lens metering system. Now previous to 77, all the metering systems was an external meter. The meter read the light from not through the lens but it was outside on the camera body. And uh, this created a lot of problems, not problems, but this they came in with a lot of issues, especially with the advent of these telephoto lenses. Now, before the uh, SLR came in, uh, most telephoto lenses used, especially on the rangefinder camera, was about 130, 135, nothing beyond that. It is only with the advent of the SLR and the technology of seeing through the lens that we were able to get uh, longer focal lengths. And the 200 at that time was probably the longest focal length. Ever. So this is probably the first uh, telephoto lens for an S for, at, of that time. Now uh, this made uh, these external meters uh, rather not very uh, reliable because uh, the subject being far away, uh, you had to compensate for that. And then if you added any filters to your lenses, you had to compensate for that. So to surmount that problem, uh, to overcome that problem, they introduced a TTL meter. Now you can imagine that uh, with this auto function on this lens in in the sense that when uh, that the remain the lens remains wide open and only stops down to your chosen aperture when you press the shutter would create problems for this uh, metering so what nikon did is they came up with a method called ai or auto indexing which basically solved this problem i won't go into the tech, uh, technical details of how they did it and what is it not? But suffice to say that the new lenses were now known as AI lenses. So what that meant was that these lenses, auto lenses, could not be used with the latest Nikon cameras. So what Nikon did is they offered a service to the uh, owners of these old lenses in which they adapted them to AI. So therefore, when you buy this lens, you need to we are very sure that this has actually been adapted to AI because if it has not been adapted to AI then it will not work with uh, most of your cameras. It will only work with any camera that has a, a TTL metering system it will not work. So you need to be aware of that. And how, are, how can you f be sure that uh, uh, this has been adapted for AI? Well there is really no way of, of determining that. You have to just take the word of the previous owner or you could, if you own a digital uh, Nikon, a DSLR, you can attach the lens to your DSLR. Yes, these AI lenses will fit on most modern DSLRs. Now, how cool is that? You can use a 60 or lens made in 1960 with a camera made in 2020. No reason why you can't. So if you fit, fix this lens on one of your latest uh, DSLRs, and uh, put it on manual and if the metering works then it is uh, it has been adapted for AI and you are good to go. So the Nikon Q is a beautiful lens uh, made fully of metal as all lenses were made in those days. Uh, it gives a real, real solid feel. I mean you could use this as a weapon hit somebody over the head with it but uh, I wouldn't recommend it. It's too good a lens to use uh, as a weapon. Uh, it has a standard 52mm uh, filter here. 
and uh, this particular one has this uh, fancy rubber hood <laughs> but this doesn't come with the lens has been added on the previous one I added on I can see of the rubber taping here now this lens I've been I use this lens uh, most of the time with my F FM10 Nikon FM10 I have reviewed that camera previously and uh, if you haven't seen that uh, review I suggest that you do so and to help you do so I have uh, dropping a link down in the description this is my go to wildlife lens uh, I use it almost exclusively for wildlife and uh, it's really a beautiful lens really enjoy using this so it's hardly uh, it's a really compact lens not very heavy uh, it's about 6 6 and a half inches uh, uh, inches long and uh, you understand that it has it has no image stabilization but I still have no problems holding it steady it is really it just fits beautifully in my hand and uh, using it is it's a pleasure what I really like is this clunky sound when you change the aperture these are the joys of uh, mechanical cameras are really joys. so I hope you uh, enjoyed this uh, video as much as I enjoyed making it and if you did and if you do please don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you very much and uh, see you next time